glory. All I gotta do is think of the ways he's made. All I gotta do is think of the doors he's open. And my hands start clapping. And my feet start moving. Hey! So thank you, Jesus. 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 You want to tell them. You got to tell them. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, what you say, church? I just want to thank. Come on, say it one more time. Say yeah, y'all yeah, sound real good, come on. Thank you, Lord. We just want to say, I just want to think. I just want to think. One more, come on, say, you made a way. You made a way. the sound of praise in the room come on we bless his name we bless his name we magnify him we glorify him bless the lord all my soul and all that is within me i command my soul to bless him i command my hands to bless him i command my feet to bless him i won't let a rock cry out in my place he created us to worship him so we gonna bless his name Tell your neighbor, say, we're going to bless his name. Oh, come on, tell your neighbor, say, we're going to bless his name. For he's worthy. Can I see you clap your hands? Come on. We love you, Jesus. Come on. Repeat after me. Come on, say. Bless the Lord of oh my soul.
So praise him. Praise him. Praise him. As we come to Lord this morning, praise him. She's made. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Bless his holy name. At this time, it's prayer time in the temple. And we're going to ask all those who are able to stand, we ask you that we stand as we go before the throne of grace. And if you can, remain standing afterwards for the reading of God's holy word. Let us look unto the Lord. O oh, gracious, eternal, wise God, we come before you once again, O oh God, as only we can and only we know how. We ask you, God, to bless our going, bless our going in and our coming out. O oh God, we just want to thank you for this day, O oh Heavenly Father, that you have blessed us with, O oh God, and in it we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We ask you, God, right now to touch the world scene, O oh God, Lord Jesus. We ask you, God, to restore peace throughout the land. Restore peace in the Middle East, oh God, Jesus. We ask you, God, to restore peace in our reign, wherever the situation may be, oh God. For you've already declared by your holy word that your peace, oh God. And we just want to thank you. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to touch those on today, those who are sick and afflicted in their bodies. We ask you, God, to touch them and heal them, oh God, right now. 
for that sickness demon. We bind them and we send them back to the pits of hell from whence he came. For as you declared, O oh God, you, you say that you came that we may have life and life more abundantly. We ask you, God, to touch those homes, the homes that are broken, the troubled marriage, O oh God, the disobedient children, O oh God, the world scene, O oh God, violence, robberies, murders. But, O oh God, we thank you, God, that you've not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to bless this day. Bless us, O oh God, as we are assembled, that we will be on one accord and that we will give you the praise and the glory in unison. We ask you, Heavenly Father, right now to touch the shepherd of this flock, O oh God. Touch him, O oh God, as he nourish us and feed us and to take the charge diligently that you have laid upon him. We ask you, God, on this morning now to continue to touch our assistant pastor, Elder Ronald Young Sr. and his family, O oh God. O oh God, continue to just put your arms around him, Lord Jesus. Give them that comfort. For blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And we just, again, we just want to thank you. And we ask you, God, to bless the speaker of the hour, oh God, that when he preaches the word, that some soul heart may be pricked and will cry out, what must I do be saved? That when it's all done, we take no credit for all the glory and the honor belongs to you. And we ask God to bless us in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, say with me, amen. Amen. Our scripture reading is coming out of the New Testament this morning, and it's going to be out of St. John, the first chapter, beginning at verse 1. St. John, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. And it reads as follows. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name is John. The same came for witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Bless the Lord for the reading. Amen. Just to take you back, Mama Brown, remember they used to say, walk in the light. It's a beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. And say it with me, for Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the light of the world. Bless the Lord. Worship God a little more. I thank God for being here. I give honor to your apostle. Can you clap your hands for your senior leader? I give honor to the guest speaker. Can we just lift up our hands and worship him? And just give him total adoration and glory. Father, we honor you. We magnify you. Come on, there's nobody like you on all the earth. Come on, John calls for the true worshipers, those who come to worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on, can you give him the fruit of your lips right there? Come on. You are holy. Come on, you are worthy of glory. You are the alpha. You are the omega. And we worship you. Yes, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. We reverence your name, Lord. Yes, Lord. familiar song. I think we all know it. And it says this. Oh Lord, we give you praise and oh Lord, we bless your name and we our 
our voices to say thank you. And it's for your, your goodness and your mercy toward us. For your goodness and your mercy toward us. We offer praise. Can we make one big choir? Come on, everybody say, say, oh Lord. Towards me, since I 
you got to make it personal. For your good, I don't deserve it, Lord, and your mercy towards. Oh, come on, you want to make it personal? Lay your hands on yourself and say, for your goodness and your mercy. Say, towards me, towards brand new mercies we see each morning. For your goodness and your mercy towards us. We offer praise. We offer praise. Come on and give the Lord a praise for his goodness and his mercy towards us. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. At this time, I'm here to welcome all of our first-time visitors. If we have any first-time visitors in the temple or virtually, we ask those in the temple to stand and remain standing in Jesus' name. No, we're all family. Come on and let's give the Lord a praise. Come on and let's give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, we don't have any visitors. However, I do want to remind the congregation of one thing. We have a saying, oh, the Lord will do such and such and such if you let him. Well, Let's see how much we believe that. The Lord will deliver you. The Lord will heal you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord will make a way for you. Say it again. Say it again. Sometimes we have to step out of God's way and trust him wholly and completely to do what it is we need him to do. He doesn't need our help. He doesn't need any assistance from little old us. He is a capable miracle worker. I say to you on today, let him, let him, let him. On behalf of our pastor, Apostle Michael Fields, our assistant pastor, Elder Ronald Young Sr., we love you with the love of the Lord. And you may not be a visitor, but if by chance you don't have a church home, won't you consider this temple of worship where we are letting him. God bless you in Jesus name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we give God another praise? For he is worthy. Hallelujah. At this time, it's offerings time in the temple in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask that you go into your places of resources. Hallelujah. As the deacons assemble themselves. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have electronic giving in the social hall. In Jesus' name, I ask that you please stand. In Jesus' name. Let us look to the Lord. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, we come before you, Lord, thanking you, Lord. 
Hallelujah for your goodness and your mercy and your kindness. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for you being good to us, Lord. Hallelujah, making ways out of no way, Lord. Father God, hallelujah, have your hand upon us, Lord. Bless this seed. Bless this sower, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord. We ask that you open up the windows of heaven. And Lord, pour us out a blessing that we have not room to receive it, Lord. Oh, God, give gifts, Lord Jesus. Touch, have your way, Lord. Move in a mighty way. And Lord Jesus, we'll forever give your name the praise, the glory, and all the honor, for you are good and good all by yourself, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You are now in the hands of the usher. Please turn to the walls in Jesus' name. again hallelujah thank you jesus thank you for your giving in jesus name hallelujah it is our 35th celebration our anniversary church anniversary give god praise for 35 years hallelujah oh we can do better than that god has been good god has been good to us hey 35 years hallelujah we celebrate god for those 35 years of blessing hallelujah we have a guest speaker today, and I praise the Lord, our own sister Bridget Walker will read his bio in Jesus' name. Give, her God, give God praise as she comes in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, saints. I need to read a, a church announcement first. I got missed in the shuffle, so let me go ahead and read that first. Greetings of apostolic victory in the precious name of our Lord and Jesus Christ. 
We praise God for our guest psalmist this morning, Miss Jasmine Brownlee. Let's praise God for her presence and leading us into worship today. Amen. Great energy of God. Today marks, as Elder said, the beginning of our 35th church anniversary. Our theme this year, standing on a sure foundation. This is evident from our humble beginnings in 1989 at the Days Inn Hotel until now. We're excited to have Pastor T.J. McBride from Georgia with us. He will be with us all day today, so we invite you to come back tonight to our 5 p.m. service. As is customary, each member is asked to give $100. Those who are in auxiliaries, your leaders, will be reaching out to you. And if you are blessed to give more, please feel free to do so. We've planned various events throughout this year, such as a seniors appreciation event, a church cookout, and more to celebrate our 35 years. Information will continue to be sent via email, posted on social media, and there are printed flyers in the social hall. If you haven't already done so, remember June 30th, the last Sunday of the month, is your last opportunity to purchase tickets for our reception banquet. You can also purchase tickets online. For additional questions concerning the banquet, email events at grtdc.org or see Sister Cynthia King and Bernita Wilson. We're looking forward to celebrating together on Saturday, August the 17th at 6.30 p.m. for the banquet at Newton White House Mansion. Let's praise God for 35 years. 35 years. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. T.J. McBride is the senior pastor of Tabernacle of Praise Church International, one of the fastest growing congregations lo located in McDonough and Jonesboro, Georgia, a community center trailblazer and internationally sought after thought leader, speaker, recording artist, and author. Pastor McBride's message and mantra are one of faith and his ministry is the manifestation and evidence of hope. As an author, Pastor McBride's books include It's According to Your Faith, Faith for Provision, and Keep Fighting. These books are among the volumes he has written that speak to the confident assurance believers must have to win in faith. His faith has catapulted him to have three church locations, McDonnell, Jones, Jonesboro, and Griffin. Thousands of parishioners, a Bible institute, an early learning center, and a Christian academy. Pastor McBride shares his message of faith globally through outreach missions and media platforms. His Winning in Faith broadcast has reached millions of viewers via television and social media. Pastor McBride leads a global missions dedicated ministry. His outreach also has taken him to Africa to give humanitarian aid, help build churches, and teach the word of faith. Pastor TJ is married to his wife and partner in ministry, Shanae McBride, and together they have three awesome children, Ashley, Andrew, and Alexis. Pastor T.J. McBride. Let's give him a Greater Refuge Temple welcome. Come on, can we clap our hands to give Jesus a big praise, everyone? Come on, we could do better than that. God inhabits the praises of his people. If God's been good to you, you owe him a praise this morning. If he woke you up this morning, you owe him a praise this morning. If he made a way out of nowhere, you owe him a praise this morning. Come on, can I hear you lift up your voice? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Father, we give you praise and we thank you. We declare a decree, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we make a decision. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord God. We say like the old song, just another day that the Lord has kept me. So we honor you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in our lives.
And in these next few moments now, give us ears to hear what the Spirit says to us today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let all God's people shout, Amen. Hallelujah. Can you shake somebody's hand tell them I'm glad to see you today? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Come on, pick it up. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Come on, clap your hands. Satan had me bound. Come on, Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Let me hear you say it. Come on. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus. One more time, let me hear you say, come on. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. Hey, I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. Come on, church. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah. If you're glad you got the victory, come on, clap your hands. Victory, victory shall be mine. Come on, church. Oh, victory, victory shall be mine. Come on. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. Victory, victory. If you got the victory, can you sing it? Come on, church. Come on, victory, victory shall be mine. Come on, victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. Victory, victory shall be mine. Well, one more time, come on. In the name of Jesus, come on. In the name of Jesus, can I hear you? We have the victory. If you got the victory, come on, church. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, say, you have to flee. Come on, church. Oh, tell me who can stand me for us when we call on that great name. What's his name? Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. We have the victory. Come on, one more time. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. Oh, it's in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan, you have to flee. Let me hear your church. Oh, 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 tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. We have the victory. If you got the victory, let me hear you give them praise this morning. That don't sound like victory up in here. Come on, I need you to shout. I need you to shout like whatever the devil tried to do, it didn't work. Hey! Do I got somebody that knows you got the victory on this morning? I need you to give them a praise up in here. Hallelujah! Glory to God. God bless you. You can take your seats. Amen. We give glory and honor to our Lord and Savior on today. How many of y'all just glad to be alive today? <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil tried it, but I'm still here. God is awesome. I think somebody getting a victory this morning. Can y'all help her, help her, help her, help her, help her? Come on, clap your hands and praise him this morning. Come on, don't let her praise God by herself. Come on, if you know you got the victory, come on, help her praise God. Help her, help her. Yes.
Glory. Hallelujah. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. Come on, clap your hands, church. Clap your hands. If you know you got the victory, you ought to clap your hands and give God praise. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on, give them praise. Thank you, Jesus. You know, what I've learned is that you ought not to criticize anybody's praise because you don't know what somebody done been through. Do I got three people in here that can say God's been good to me and I owe him a praise right now. Matter of fact, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shake somebody's hand next to you. Tell him I owe him a praise. I owe him a praise. He's been good to me. 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 Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Is there, if there's ever a people that don't mind praising God, it should be the children of God. And so we give God praise. Clap your hands one more time for the Lord this morning. Amen. We honor the Lord and we thank God for his grace and his mercy today. Amen. Can you praise God for the man of, of God for this house, Apostle Fields? Come on, y'all. Let's give God praise for Pastor. Come on. Thank God for his sacrifice. Thank God for his faithfulness. Come on. Thank God for him preaching the word. Hallelujah. We thank God for him and his family. Amen. Giving honor. Amen. To Mother Fields as well. God bless you, Mother. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We give God praise and we thank God for the opportunity to celebrate with you 35 years. To God be the glory. I want you to know that that's a major accomplishment. Amen. Some churches don't stay open 10 years. And so we thank God for 35 years of faithful service. Amen. To this city, we give God praise. Amen. I want to thank God uh, in honor of my wife and her absence. Pastor Shanae McBride is my wife and my three children. I give God praise for them. Amen. She sends her love. I just want to give you all just a little history, just in case you all don't know. Amen. I am one of the sons of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My father and Apostle Fields served together. Amen. At the national convention meetings. And so, amen. I was one of the young boys running around the convention. Y'all say amen to that. Praise God. Amen. Running around. Um, ushers telling me to sit down. I was one of those young boys, grew up in the apostolic teens ministry, and amen, grew up, my, my father and my mother raised us, amen, in the church of our Lord. We're, I'm originally from San Francisco, California, and that's where my home is, and I was born and raised out there, amen, just in case y'all don't know, that's the home of the San Francisco 49ers, amen. We, we got five Super Bowls. We should have won that last one, Apostle. We should have won that last one. Y'all say amen. Y'all don't want to... We should have won that last one, but amen. We, I think we got grace to come back again and finish the job. All right. Amen. But we were born and raised out there, and, and then uh, the Lord allowed my wife and I to move out to Georgia, and that's where we planted our church, Tabernacle of Praise Church uh, International. And so I'm very happy to be here, very happy to be with you all today. I have a message that God has given me to share with you all, and uh, I hope y'all love the word because I'm going to give you a few scriptures. Is that all right? Amen. Praise God. Who still loves reading the Bible? Come on now. Amen. So I'm going to, 
I, I have a, a foundation scripture that we're going to start with in Hebrews 11, verse 1. But then we're going to go through the Bible a little bit, and I want to give you some scriptures to hold on to. Amen. And if you can't keep up with me, just write them down because you're going to need them later on. Praise God. Amen. They used to sing a song when I was little, say, take the Lord along with you everywhere you go because you're going to need him. So we're going to give you the word on today. The, 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 the message that God has told me to give to you all today, it's, it's according to your faith. Somebody say, it's according to my faith. Praise God. Hebrews 11, verse 1, the King James Version says, maybe I'll allow you all to stand as the custom of this house. The King James Version says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not, not seen. I want to shout, now faith. Can you say now faith? now faith? I'm here to let you all know that something is getting ready to happen in your life right now. Amen. Amen. That wasn't for everybody. I, I feel like I'm talking to a few people that as I'm preaching today, something is shifting in the atmosphere right now because we have now faith. Somebody shout now faith. now faith. Father, use us in these next few moments for your glory in Jesus name. Somebody shout amen. You may take your seats. Now faith. It's according to your faith. That same scripture and the Amplified Version says this. Now faith is the assurance. It's the confirmation. It's the title deed of the things we hope for. Being the proof of things we do not see. I want you all to see that because in the Amplified Version, he says faith is the title deed. And those of you all that know about a title deed, title deed represents ownership. That whenever you got a title, that means you own something. And I want you to, I want to report to you today that if you are believing God for something on this morning, God says you don't have to cross your fingers and hope that is happening. God says you already own it right now. I need somebody that believe God, that he is your healer. I need you to know that your healing is already in your ownership. You own your healing. You own your deliverance. Come on, say amen to that. You own your peace. You own your joy. Come on, somebody. If you believe in God for property, you already own it. If you believe in God for a new job, you already own it. If you believe in God to turn some things around, I need somebody to shout, I already own it. When you leave this place, you need to leave this place with a praise and thank God that it's not going to happen. Thank God that it's already done. I need about 10 people that know that what God has promised you is already done. To give them praise like you know is God has already worked it out. Give somebody a high five and tell them it's already done. Hallelujah. It's already done. I said it's already done. I'm not trying to be healed. I'm already healed. I'm not trying to have joy. I already got joy. So if it's already mine, watch this, then I got to make sure that I don't allow my senses to out talk me from what God has already promised me. Now, I'm going to let you all know, sometimes your senses will get the best of you. Because we're human, sometimes we walk by what we see, we walk by what we feel, we walk by what others have said. And we allow our senses to out-talk us out of what God has already promised us. But the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Somewhere in your life, you're going to have to disconnect from your senses and get connected to what God has already said about your life. Even though it don't look right, you got to know he's working everything out for your good. Even though it don't look like things are turning, come on, you got to believe that God is turning everything around for you. Even though it may look like it's going down, you got to believe that greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. You got to believe that I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. You got to believe, you got to know, and you got to know it by faith. Somebody say amen to that. So here's what I want to report to you. What God is about to do in your life, it may not make sense, but it sure enough makes faith. Amen. Y'all didn't hear that. I said what God's about to do in your life, it may not make sense, 
But it sure enough makes faith. May, may not make sense after you got the doctor's report. Don't make sense that you could be healed, but faith says you already healed. Come on, it don't make sense that what the people have said about your finances that you're going to be wealthy and walk in riches. You got to hold on to God's word and say, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. So I don't walk by sense. I walk by faith. Y'all say amen to that. Okay, now I want to help you with this because y'all remember the two blind men in Matthew chapter 9? Y'all want to go over there with me? Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 through 29. There's a story there where Jesus is interacting with two blind men. And in verse 27, we pick it up. It says, Jesus departed thence. Two blind men followed him crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus saith unto him, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touch he their eyes. And look what he says. And he said this, according to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith. If you look at that same scripture in the message translation, it says this. He touched their eyes and said, become what you believe. Become what you believe. If you believe it, then go ahead and step into it. I'm letting you all know that everything that God is going to do in your life, it's not according to your credit. It's not according to your background. It's not according to your degrees. We thank God for degrees. It's not according to who you connected to. But the Bible says everything that God's going to do in your life, it's according to your faith. You may not have enough money, but you got enough faith. Come on. You may not have enough degrees, but you got enough faith. I wish I could get a witness up in here. That knows that everything that has happened in your life, come on, you cannot look and say, I had the money, I had the, uh, the expertise. What you had was faith. And when you got faith, that's all God needs to work with. Some of y'all can stand here and say, we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. I want to show you something in the word because faith is a belief system. That God downloaded in you the minute you got saved. He put a system in you. Now, why did he put the system in you? Because, because you were born into sin, you had the world system in you. And that's why when you got born again, God had to put a new system in you. Because this system is going to trust God, watch this, and not trust man. Jeremiah 17 says, cursed are those who put their trust in man. Some of y'all, you've been disappointed in life because you put your trust in people. But Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord. Y'all ain't helping me. With all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. It's easy to trust him when you can understand it. But can you trust him when you don't understand it? When you have heartache and pain, can you keep on trusting God? When you pray for somebody and they transition, can you keep on trusting God? When you thought you had this job locked and loaded, can you keep on trusting God? And there's a group of people in church that can trust God when everything is going good. But I think I got some people in here that can say, Pastor, I've been tested and I've been tried. And I can stand firm on ten toes and say, I still trust God, even though there have been some things in my life that have challenged me. And that is the system of faith that God put in you. Now, I want to help you with this because with every system, there's a, there's a virus that comes to attack your system. Praise God. I remember when I had my, my laptop and my laptop apostle was acting funny and I was trying to figure out what was going on with it. And I took it down to the store and they told me, they said, sir, they said, unfortunately, a virus has gotten into your system. And when the virus gets into the system, watch this, it slows the computer down. He says, and if you let it stay in there too long, it will eventually shut it down. What is the virus that the enemy sends to fight your system? It's called the virus of doubt, the virus of fear, and the virus of unbelief. Saints, you will shout up in here on Sunday. But on Monday, you scratching your head. You're trying to figure out if God's really going to do what he said he's going to do. I'm here to let you know that's a virus. 
because after you get done shouting, you got to have confidence. Come on. That the same God that brought you out last week, y'all ain't helping me up in here. It's the same God that's going to bring you out this week. And in the name of Jesus, we cancel every virus of doubt, fear, and unbelief. I'm here to let you know that your whole house shall be saved. I'm here to let you know that every prayer that you offered up to God, God heard your prayer, and you're about to get an answer this week in the name of Jesus. Now, some of y'all are sitting here a little too cute. I need to know, do I got some radical people up in here that know that if God said it, God is not a man that he should lie. If he said it, it's got to come to pass. Do I got 20 people up in here that can say, if God said it, it's got to come to pass. I need you to praise him like you know it's about to happen. How? He called him Osata. I need you to praise him like you know every prayer that you offered up, he will come through. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. My, my, my faith system tells me that if God told me in prayer that everything is going to be all right, I got to go throughout this week saying I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. Now, I, I, I want you to get this because Romans 10, 17 says faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Now I want you to see that because you need faith. You need faith. Hebrews eleven six 6 says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. Your shouting don't do it. Your running don't do it. Your slobbing don't do it. You got to get some faith in you. Praise God. Y'all say amen to that. Amen. You got to get some faith. You need faith to fight the enemy. You need faith to stand on your, on your feet throughout the week. And so faith comes by hearing. Okay, now here's what I found out. So if faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, then watch this. The devil is after you hearing the word. That's what he's after. Okay, watch this. He don't mind you singing. And he don't mind you running and he don't mind you shouting. Matter of fact, some of us, the devil shout right along with us. He don't care about all of that because all of those are expressions. That's how we express our appreciation to God. But how you fight is with your faith. That's why Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. That's how you fight. Watch this. So where's, where's the attack comes in? Hearing the word. Okay, now watch this. You don't never go to sleep during praise and worship. Some of y'all, you leaning back on that pew right now. You don't, you don't never go to sleep when they run into shouting. But you know what happens when the word is being preached? Come on, the sleepy demon come down here. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Sleepy demon come down. And the sleepy demon start leaning on you real good. Come on now. now the, sleep, the sleepy demon never come when I'm watching a football game. I don't ever see him. Sleepy demon don't ever come when I'm hearing my favorite song. But as soon as I want to hear the word, y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. All of a sudden, you start feeling a little lean over here to the right. Hey Amen. I need you to shake that sleepy demon off and tell that devil, I will hear the word today. Because I got some devils I got to fight this week. Y'all, come on, somebody. And if I keep hearing the word, my faith is getting stronger every day. So faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh, can I, can I use your minister? Come here real quick. Faith cometh by hearing, all right? Now, now, now watch this. This is faith. This is Mr. Faith now. Now the Bible says faith cometh. Cometh means to keep coming. So faith keeps coming when it hears what? The word. Okay? And watch this. And not just hear it once, but I got to keep hearing it over. And over again. Okay? Watch this. So on Sunday, when I get the word in me now, now when I leave here, I got to hear it again. Amen. And then on Tuesday, I got to do what? Amen. Hear it again. Then on Wednesday, what I got to do? Hear it again. Then on Thursday, what I got to do? Hear it again. Why? Because the Bible says faith keeps coming when it hears the word. Okay? So you stand there, faith, and don't move until you hear the word. 
All right? Doctor, give you a report. Say you, say you got going, something going on in my body. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, have mercy. I'm sick. My back hurt. My knees hurt. My head hurt. Everything hurt. You know, my mama had this when I was little. You know, my auntie and them had this. Matter of fact, I think this run through my family. Matter of fact, everybody done had this. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. You know, it's something because just the other day, I felt a tingling in my hip. Now, have y'all noticed that faith didn't move? Why? Because faith don't come, watch this, when they hear your complaining. Faith don't come when it hear how you feel about stuff. Faith comes when it hears what? The word. So instead of me saying I'm sick, watch this, but he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. And with his stripes, I am he. I need somebody up in here. Okay. Stay right there. Stay right there. All right? I don't speak what I feel. I speak what he said. Some of us, we've been in church a long time, and we ain't seen no miracles because you've been complaining about your situation instead of talking the word of God. By faith, my body is healed. I thank the doctor for his report, but whose report will you believe? Oh, y'all ain't helping me up in here. We will believe the report of the Lord. I wish I had some sanctified people up in here. His report says I am healed. All right. All right. That didn't help some of y'all. Let me do something else. Okay. Uh, my finances is under attack. Okay. Oh, Lord. I just feel like I ain't have no money. Hey, I don't have, I can't, I can't pay these bills. This is just too much. You, I gave him my tithes and offer, but I ain't just, I ain't got no money. It seemed like I just work and work and work, and I ain't got no money. I just, I just, it, we ain't never, you, you know, mom and them, they didn't have no money. And now I ain't got no money. I just feel like I ain't never, watch this, listen, listen to what you're saying. I ain't never going to get out of this hole. Just seem like I ain't never gonna get through this. I want y'all to look at faith. Did faith move? No, because faith comes to you when it hears what? The word. So instead of saying what I feel, I'm gonna say, God, I give you praise that you will supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. God, I thank you that every need is met. And every bill is paid. And you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the one that will provide. Do I got somebody up in here that knows that if I speak the word, faith is coming to me. I want you to give somebody a high five and tell them speak the word. Speak the word. Watch this now. Because you, Lord, come. Can I get? Can I say something prophetically over to you? This week, you are about to see some new results. Amen. Thank y'all for receiving that. Let me try this side. I said this week, you are about to see some new results. Pastor, where you get that from? Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. What God has in store for those that love him. You better give God praise in advance. Because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, God is already walking through your week. And somebody's about to walk into a miracle. I wish I could get somebody to give God praise. That say, I don't have to see it. I believe it by faith. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready for your miracle. Okay. I say, get ready for your miracle. I say, get ready for your miracle. Now watch this. What you got to do now, here's your homework assignment. Find you some scriptures that you can hold on to. 
You know all the songs, but you don't know enough scriptures. Y'all say amen to that. Come on, you know Kanye West song, first verse, second verse, and third verse, but you can't quote Psalms 23. You got to get the scriptures in your spirit. Because when you get in trouble, you ain't got time to scroll through your phone and find a word. Come on, you got to have the word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against me. I wish I could get some Bible believers up in here. You've been in church too long to not know enough scriptures. You got to hold on to something. Y'all say amen. amen. Man, when I was going through, I had to hold on to Isaiah 54. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Come on, when things were coming up against me, I had to hold on to the word. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. I had to hold on to the word. I am more than a conqueror. I had to hold on to the word. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony. You got to look at somebody say, hold on to the word. Okay. Now, now what's happening? When you get this system of faith downloaded in you, it will change your mind. Some of y'all, I can see the light bulbs coming on right now. Come on. That's why Romans 12 says, be not conformed to this world. Come on, help me, Bible readers. But be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. The New Living Translation says, let God transform you by changing the way you think. Come on, somebody. I'm celebrating 28 years of marriage to my wife, but I need y'all to understand, God had to change the way I thought. Come on, I thought if I just be the big old bad man that I am, that she was just going to fall in line. Well, I had a rude awakening. Come on, y'all ain't helping me preach up in here. Come on. You, you need God not to change the way you think, not just in church, but how about at home? I had to learn how to be a husband. I had to learn how to honor my wife. I had to learn how to cherish her. I had to learn that I can't bully her, that we got to walk this thing together. And when the Lord transformed my mind, then she said, oh, you looking good now. I said, I know. Come on, y'all say amen to that. How many know when God changed your mind, everything started looking right? All of a sudden, the chicken started tasting good again. Come on, say amen. All of a sudden, the roast beef started having seasoning on it. Amen. Some, some of y'all laughing, but some of y'all need to hear what I'm saying. You got to let God transform your mind. Don't be conformed to this world. I got a faith system in me. I operate different. I walk different. When I come into the job, people going to know that somebody that walks with God just came in the building. So... When I keep walking by faith, God starts to do something in me. Why? Romans 1 and 17 says, the just shall live by faith. That word live means to be alive. One of the things that bothers me about the saints of God is that we aren't alive anymore. I mean, you got folk that don't have no Holy Ghost more happy than you. Y'all say amen. Come on now. The only time you get happy is when you're in church. You ought to take the Holy Ghost with you to work. Y'all say amen. And when people ask you, how you doing? You ought to say, I'm saved. I got favor on my life. God is a good God. Amen. Let me come over here. I said, God is a good God. Come on. When you see somebody in the street, you ought to say, God is a good God. When, when faith is alive in you, you got joy. And could it be the reason why folks don't want to come to church? It's because we look at so jacked up throughout the week. We ain't got no joy. We ain't got no peace. Y'all say amen. Only time we got peace and joy is when we come in here. But the Bible says, let your light so shine. Come on, among men that they will see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. All oh, this is good in here, but can you take this same thing to your job throughout the week? So your brother and sister can see how good God is. Boy, when you get this faith in you, 
Saints, I'm trying so hard to keep my peace because I feel the Holy Ghost rising up on the inside of me. Because whenever I get to talking about how good God is in my life, come on, something starts shooting from the top of my head down to my sanctified toe because God has been faithful in my life. People going to know who God is when you start walking around with joy in your heart because you know you got faith in God. Somebody say amen to that. Okay? So what God does, he starts renewing your mind. I'm, and, and, and that's what God had to do. When he wanted to input faith in the world, he said, I got to find somebody that I could start this with. So what did he do? He found a man named Abraham. Can y'all go with me to Genesis 12? Let's go. Genesis 12. Are you still with me this morning? Amen. Come on. Are we in the book? We all right? Genesis 12. Let's go. Genesis 12. He says, verse 1. Now the Lord said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee and I will curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all of the families of the earth be blessed. I want you to look at that first sentence. Abram said, God said to Abraham, get out of your country. Get away from your family. He says, you got to get out of your place of familiarity. And you got to get into a place where you can only trust me. Some of y'all, your biggest hindrance is your crew. These my boys. These my girls. We've been together a long time and ain't did nothing for a long time. Some of your biggest hindrances could be sometimes people in your own family. Here's what he told Abram. I'm going to do something new in you, but you got to get away from them folk. Okay? So what did God do with, me, do with my family? Okay? In the, in the year of 2003, all right, my wife and I, we're serving at a ministry in the Bay Area in Oakland, California. Amen. And we're doing great. I'm a musician. Amen. And so I was over the music department, and I was leading a, a five choirs at a big church, and and she was singing in the choir. She was on the uh, diaconate board, and she, we were doing all this stuff. The Lord says, I want you to lead. I said, excuse me? <laughs> I want you to lead. Watch this. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm serving as an elder in the church. He says, I want you to leave, and I want you to move to Georgia, and you're going to start a church. I said, who? <laughs> Come on now. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable playing the organ. I'm comfortable leading the choirs. I'm comfortable. And sometimes faith will move you out of being comfortable. Some of y'all right now, God been talking to you about doing something, and you've been fighting them because you're comfortable where you're at. But when you walk by faith, God will move you into a space where you will not be comfortable. You're going to have to trust him every step of the way. And everybody say they obey God, uh, but your obedience has never been tested until he puts you in the spot where you don't know how it's going to come out. He told me, he said, leave. I said, Lord, have mercy. Went, went to the pastor I served there. I said, the Lord told me to quit and leave and go to Georgia. Where are you going to go? I don't know. You don't know. Well, where you, how you going to work? I don't know. You don't know. Well, where you going to stay? I don't know. You don't know. Okay, man, you stupid. And let me help you with something. Sometimes you will look stupid just for a minute. Oh, I wish I had a witness up in here. We went and told my parents. I went to my father. I said, Dad, God telling me to go. Go where, son? Go to Georgia. What? Ain't no. Go, huh? Georgia. Down south, we in California. Only thing I know about the south is Martin Luther King, and he gone. <laughs> Moved to Georgia. My wife and I trusted the Lord. Y'all, we got in the car, put our three little children in the back seat of the car. They were all still in car seats. Come on, we drove, Lord have mercy, a 1997, come on, a Ford uh, Taurus, which was on a wing and a prayer. Have you ever had a car that you had to pray in tongues to turn it on? Hey Amen. Some of y'all bougie in here. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I need some radical folk up in here that, that have gotten in the car and you said, Father, in the name of Jesus, please let this car turn on. We got in that car. We drove from San Francisco 
all the way to Atlanta, Georgia. Trusting God. Watch this, y'all. Not knowing where we was going to stay. Not knowing where I was going to work. Not knowing what I was going to do. But God told me to move. And when God told me to move, I had to trust God. We got in the car. We drove out to Atlanta, Georgia. Now I said, God, I need you to talk to me. I have one aunt that lives in the uh, southern area uh, of Atlanta, in the Griffin area. And I called her. I said, uh, God told me to come out here, and he's going to do a work in me. She said, what else he say? He said, nothing. <laughs> she, said, she said, well, come on. Y'all can stay with me until he finished talking to you. <laughs> come on, y'all. <laughs> We, we, we got down there, we got down there, we staying with her. I'm talking about this is, this is, we just jumped in the car and left. Put everything in U-Haul, put what we could in our trunk and left. See, people looking at me now, but they don't know the steps that I had to take. See, everybody watching you now, and, but they don't know the years that you had to trust God. We get down, we get down to Georgia, amen, and I get down there and I went to go get some gas. I put the card in, 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 the, in the place where you could, you know, purchase your gas. And when I took the card out, the, the reader said, please see attendant. <laughs> now, for y'all that don't know, please see attendant don't mean go see the attendant. It means you ain't got no money. <laughs> Since I stood there, I done, I done drove my family all the way out to Georgia, and I'm tapped out. I don't have no money. I looked up to God. I said, God, you done made a fool out of me. I said, God, I need something. This is on a Saturday. I said, God, I need something to change. I said, because if you don't show me you are God, I'm going to call my dad. I'm going to say, send me five tickets and send me back home. Because I tried to do what God told me to do. I must have misheard him. Okay? So I said, God, you got to show up tomorrow. Now, let me help you with something. God is not afraid for you to put him to the test. I said, you got to show me something tomorrow. That Sunday I woke up. I said, okay, I'm going to hear from God today. We went, we looked at a few churches. I said, let's go to this church on the way, this church called Divine Faith on, in Jonesboro. We saw the church. I went into the church. When I got into the church, the man was up preaching about stepping out on faith. I said, mm, okay, Lord, are you talking to me? I said, because I need to hear you today. All right, I ain't got no money. I ain't got no job. I ain't got no place. I need to hear what you got to say to me. All right, he got done preaching. He said, anybody want to join the church? My wife said, honey, I think we need to just join the church. Maybe this is where God wants us to be. I said, well, okay, let's see, because at that time I'm open. I'm like, let's go. So I get in church. I go into the back where they're taking the sign-ups. I look on the wall, and there's a picture of a sister that I knew from California. I haven't seen her in several years. I said, she go here? We're like, oh, my God. So I asked the guy. I said, is she still here? No, she not here today. I said, oh, man. I said, okay, well, I'll catch her another time. When I'm walking out of the church, guess who's in the parking lot? That sister. She looks at me, she, and we, you know how black folk do. Oh, my God, we ain't seen each other. So she, she said, you are who the pastor is looking for. He's been saying, Lord, send me somebody that can take over my music and take it to another level. She said, he's been looking for somebody like you. I said, well, I want to meet him. So in, on the inside, I'm going, okay, Lord, you're talking. She said, I want to meet him. She said, well, he already left. I said, oh. She said, okay. She said, well, let me go inside and get my purse. I'm coming back out. When she go inside to get her purse, guess who's walking through the sanctuary? The pastor. Hey Amen. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. The pastor, she says, you need to meet T.J. McBride. He what you've been looking for. He come out there. He says, she tell me you do good with the music. I said, yeah, I do good with the music. He said, are you looking for a job? I said, sure enough, I'm looking for a job. He said, why don't you play the organ for me tonight at the night service if I ain't never played the organ? Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. Come on, somebody. I got on that organ apostle. I was kicking my leg out. I was, I was, I, I turned around. I said, you're going to get all of this today. Praise God. I played that organ. And when I got done playing the organ, he stood up in the middle of his service. Just never met me before. He stood up and he turned to me and he said, the Lord told me to hire you full time on my church staff. 
no background check, no resume. Come on, y'all ain't helping me up in here. I'm here to let you know that when you walk by faith, God will answer your prayer. And I feel like I got 10 people up in here that can say, I'm walking by faith, Pastor. So you got to stand on the word of God. You got to stand on God's word even when it don't look right. Come on, some of y'all, you're going through something right now. But the Bible says, but I reckon that the come on, sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. Come on, to the glory that shall be revealed. God told me to tell you, if he can get you to praise God today, there's some glory that's coming into your life. I need all the praisers that know that God is working something out for you. I need you to give them praise like glory is on the way. Look at somebody say, glory is on the way. Look at somebody say, my miracle is on the way. Look at somebody say, my breakthrough is on the way. But I need you to praise them like you know it's on. Shake somebody's hand, tell them it's on the way. It's on the way. Come on, shake somebody's hand and tell them it's on the way. Come on, I said shake somebody's hand and tell them it's on the way. Come on, your victory's on the way. Your breakthrough is on the way. Come on, whatever you need from God today. God says if you got enough faith, I got enough power to make it happen. Say yeah! So God told me to tell you, that what you got to do now today is you got to learn how to praise him by faith. Now, when you praise him by faith, this is a different type of praise. Because some people praise God based off of conditions. If the conditions are good, then I will praise God. If my money is right, then I will praise God. If everything is looking okay, then I will praise God. But then there's a, something called an unconditional praise. That means if the conditions don't look good, y'all ain't helping me. If the money don't look right, come on, if things don't seem like it's working out, you still got to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Look at somebody say, I still got a praise in me. Come on, put me in A flat. Come on. Look at somebody say, I still got a praise down on the inside of me that no matter what it looks like, I still will lift my hands. I still will stand on my feet. I still will give him the praise. The Bible says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the temple and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the hot sounding cymbals. Let everything, let everything, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. If you got breath in your body, you need to give him a praise. If he's opened up a door for you, you need to give him a praise. If you know he stepped in to your situation, you need to give him a praise. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Do I got somebody in this church that can say God's been good to me and I got to give him a praise. Say yes. Say yeah. Say yeah. Hey. I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Somebody's about to be healed. Somebody's about to be set free. Say yeah. Come here. Come here. If you got strength, stand to your feet. Yes. There's a story in the Bible about Paul and Silas. 
in Acts chapter 16 said these boys was locked up in jail. Come on. The Bible says that his hands were tied up. Put your hands out like that. How many of you have ever felt like your hands have been tied up? The Bible said that his feet were tied up. Put your feet together. Watch this. That old stupid devil thought that if he tied up your hands, thought that if he tied up your feet, that it would stop you from moving forward. But what the stupid devil forgot to do was put something over his mouth. Because as long as you got a praise, you can praise your way out of anything. As long as you got a praise, you can praise your way out of anything. I wish I had somebody up in refuge to say, I will praise him. I will praise him. I will praise him. Say yeah. Say yeah. If you got some stuff going on, praise the Lord. If you got some situations you got to face this week, you got to praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. Hey, I want you to do. He called up Abasita Yada Bahaya. Watch this. Can I, can I give you something? The Bible says when he started praising God in jail, the Bible says that the prisons started shaking. But here's your prophetic word. Are y'all ready? The Bible says that every door was open. Hey Amen. I, I don't have the right people up in here. He said every door was open. God told me to tell you, if he could trust you while you're in the midst of a crazy situation to praise him by faith, he says your praise is going to open up every door. Get ready for new doors of opportunity. Get ready for new doors in your career. Get ready for new doors for your family. But there's something else happening, and then we're going to praise God. But then the Bible says, Apostle, he says, and everybody's bands were loosed. Watch this. This let me know that the praise that I'm about to give God is not just for me. It's for everybody connected to me. You here at Refuge Now, but you got family members that need to be free. You got friends that need to be set free. God says you got enough faith in your praise that it can set everybody else's bands loose. God told me to tell you that in the next 10 minutes, if he could trust you with a praise, deliverance is about to hit your family. Oh! Deliverance is about to hit your children. Oh! Your son and your daughter is about to be set free. Hey! Hey! Your cousin is about to come to Jesus. Come on, your nephew is going to give his life to Christ. But he needs you to praise God. So on the count of three, I'm going to give you a chance to praise. Watch this. We need a praise with your mouth. And we need a praise when you dance. If I can trust you to be obedient and praise God with your mouth and with your feet, I want you to see this week how God's about to open up doors. And he's about to set some people in your house free. Are you ready? Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor. On the count of three, I want you to praise God with me. Now shake their hand and say, help me, 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 help me. Come on and pray. I need you to praise God like you. Oh, turn up. I need some people to praise God like this Sunday. God is setting my family free. This Sunday, God is healing my body. This Sunday, God is turning it around. Shout! Yes, sir. 
I need you to get out in the aisle. I need some people to dance. Yes. Let everything, let everything, let everything that has breath show. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. Oh! He caught up a bow shot yet of a hope. Hey! He's working it out. He's working it out. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. Do I got anybody in the back that don't mind praising them? Come on, church. Come on, church. Oh, yeah. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here. I said the Holy Ghost is here. Whatever you need from God, you can get it right now. Somebody shout! I said I feel the Holy Ghost. I said I feel the Holy Ghost. He called up a boshata. He called up a Oh! Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. I'm going to give you 60 more seconds. I need you to praise God for your family. Praise God for your children. Praise God. It's already done. It's already done. Hey! Oh! Oh! There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Oh! Somebody getting a victory. Somebody getting a breakthrough. Somebody, ow! Oh! Come on, mothers. Come on, deacons. Come on, preachers. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. He inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits the praises of his people. Yeah! You got to praise him by faith. You got to say, no matter what it looked like, I'm still going to praise you. No matter what it feel like, I'm still going to praise you. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Come on, mom. I need every mother to praise God that your child is being saved. I need all the grandmothers to praise God like your grandchildren are being saved. I need you to shout. I need you to dance. I need you to lift up with praise. It's already done. It's already done. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on. To God be the glory. Come on. To God. For the thing, he's done. He's for the thing, for the thing, he's done. For 
for the things he's done. For all the things he's done. Let's go to God. To God. Let me hear your church be the glory. To God. Be the glory. I can't hear you. To God. It's a praise party in here. I said it's a praise party in here. He called up a Moshata. Hey! He called up a Masita. Glory! Hold up a shot. Hey! Hey! Hell up a Sata. In the name of Jesus. Oh! Fire! Hold up a Hey! Take shot. He called up a Bosita. Fire! Out, out of your belly. Out of your oh! Get behind him. Thank you. Hey! In the name of Jesus. And fire! Come on. She called up a Bosita. Hey! How? Woo! Come on. Come on. Come on. I need a church to start praising God. Come on. Hey! Holy Ghost is moving. Holy Ghost is moving. Holy Ghost is moving. Hey! Ho, 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 ho. He caught oh! Woo! Hey! Hey! Holy Ghost on top of Hey! Come on, church. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. The Holy Ghost is here. I said the Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Everything you pray, everything you've been praying for, God's heard your prayer. God has heard your power. Oh, he oh, caught up about Shia. Oh, he heard your prayer, mother. He heard your prayer, mother. Hey, how do I see? Somebody praise God with mother. Somebody praise God. He heard your prayer. He heard, oh, whoo. Head of a sick, head of a Bahia. Hey, head of a bubble shatter. Head of a sick. Hey, hey. Head of a bubble shatter. He heard your prayer. He heard your prayer, mother. He heard your prayer. Hey, hold up a shot. Come on, somebody give him praise. He called up a bubble shatter. Hey, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, one more time, to God, to God. Come on, say in church, be the glory to God. I speak, I speak new strength. I need, I need, I need y'all ministers to get around apostle right now. I speak new strength. Hey. I speak a fresh anointing. Hey. The journey has been hard. People don't know the weight you've been carrying. But I hear the Lord say, Michael, I'm giving you new strength. He You will not get weary in your well-doing. 
But I hear the Lord say, I'm giving you strength in your mind, strength in your heart, strength in your spirit. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I'm going to give you strength to keep preaching. I'm going to give you strength to keep prophesying. And I'm going to give you strength to keep living. You shall not die. Hey! But live! And declare the works of the Lord. I, I hear you saying, Lord, I wish you would have took me. You took my wife. I wish you would have took me. And I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to give you strength to stand. Huh? I'm going to give you strength to keep on declaring my name. Ah. I hear the Lord say, I'm not done with you yet. That I still have purpose. Hey, I still have promise. And in Jesus' name, get ready. I speak new doors opening up for apostles. I speak new opportunities. Come on. Hallelujah. I speak God making ways out of no way. And we speak new strength into the man of God. In the name of Jesus. Father, I declare decree that this church will be a church of refuge. That people will find help in the time of need. And when they come here, they will be renewed. They will be delivered. They will be set free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're believing God for a miracle, I want you to come down to the altar. We're going to pray together. Whatever you need from God, it's already here. All he wants to know is do you have faith to believe? Come on. Y'all can just crowd this altar. Come on. Just come to the altar in the name of Jesus. Come on. The Holy Ghost is here. And whatever you need from God, you can get it. Come on. And when you come down here, lift your hands and just say, Lord, I believe you. Lord, I trust you. I know that you are not a man that you should lie. That if you said it, you will make it happen in my life. Hallelujah. Come on, come with your hands lifted up high and say, God, I have faith that whatever you have said in my life, it will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Father, you see your people right now. Somebody needs healing right now. And as we come to the altar, we're coming believing you and trusting you that with your stripes we are healed in the name of Jesus. Father, somebody's coming on behalf of their family. And they need you to turn it around. And in the name of Jesus, we stand by faith. Hallelujah. And we believe you. And we trust your word. You did it before. And we know you could do it again. So in the name of Jesus, heal, deliver, and set free. In the name of Jesus, somebody needs a financial miracle. And Father, I thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the one that will provide for us. And so, Father, we thank you. Lord God, that provision is here. That whatever we need from God, you will provide it for us. Father, I thank you that by the end of this week, somebody's going to see their miracle. By the end of this week, somebody's going to see God turn it around. In the name of Jesus, we bind Satan. And we rebuke the enemy today. And we say, Lord, set your people free. And whatever we need on today, it's already done. I said, it's already done. I said, it's already done. Come on, clap your hands like it's already done. Come on, give them praise like it's already done. Come on, I need you to say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, clap your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, it's already done. Say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. God has given me a prophetic word to share with you. I heard the Holy Spirit say, he said, write these words down and tell the people at refuge that they are walking in a season of unlimited faith. That the things that used to hinder them in the past will no longer have rule in your life. Your faith 
is pushing you into the invisible. And you will access those things that were once unattainable for you. The Lord told me to tell you, Refuge, what used to be hard will become easy. What used to be unreachable will be within your reach. You will now walk in victory. And every enemy that has risen up against you will be defeated. The Lord told me to tell you the problems that surround you will become stepping stones towards your victory. Get ready to get everything back that the enemy has stolen from you. Your family will be saved. Your bodies will be healed. Your children are coming home. Finances are coming to you. Promotion is coming to you. Deliverance is coming to you. For you are walking by faith and not by sight. If you receive that word, lift your hands and just begin to thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray a fresh anointing on this house. And we thank you that we are walking by faith and not by sight. I want somebody to shout, thank you for my miracle. You said it, but I need you to shout. Say, thank you for my miracle. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now give him a praise like you know it's already done. Come on, give him a praise like you know. Hold up, bubble, bubble, shut up. Hallelujah. I want you to hug a few people around you. Tell them your miracle is here. Come on. Come on, hug somebody. Tell them your miracle is here. Mm -hmm. It's a new season. Mm. It's a new day. A fresh anointing fire is coming my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. Six. It's a new season, and it's coming to me. Come on, say, everybody say, it's a new season. It's a new day, a fresh anointing is coming my way. Hey, yeah, it's a season of power. Yes. And prosperity, three, six, it's a new season, and it's coming to me. Can I get you to say, it's a new season? It's a new season. Come on, tell somebody, it's a new day. It's a new day. A fresh anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Let's give the Lord a praise for his word. Glory. Hallelujah. We thank God always for his word. Men of God minister to us on today. Yes, let's give Jesus some praise for his manservant. Wonderful. Quickly, we want to be a blessing to him. We want to bless the man of God. He has labored in the gospel. 
He did not hold back. He gave us everything God gave him. And we want to bless him. Will you help me do that? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your manservant. We cannot pay you for what we have experienced here. But we want to bless your manservant. We ask even now that you would restore, renew, replenish his strength. Pour out a fresh anointing upon him. We ask that you continue to use him for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Bless, Lord, his family, his ministry. Continue, Lord, to strengthen him. Now bless us as we come to bless him. In Jesus' name, say it with me. In Jesus' name, amen. Take an offering in your hand for the man of God. Let's bless him. Stand, everyone who can stand. Turn to the wall. Follow the leadership of the usher. Let's bless the preacher. Everyone who can stand, stand. And let's bless this man of God. He's going to be back with us on this afternoon. Service beginning at four. Five. All right. I tell you four, you'll be here by five, right? Bless you. God bless you and thank you so much for joining us today in worship. It is my prayer that you are enlightened, enriched, and encouraged by the word of God that went forth. Always praying that the Lord would strengthen your hearts and mind, bring you to a place that he wants you to be always. God is able to do just that. And just in case you are looking for a church home, want you to feel free to be a part of Greater Refuge Temple here in Washington, D.C. We'll be glad to take you under watch care and we'll do our very best to help you find a permanent place of worship in your area. We all need the Word of God and we all need a place where we can go and be fed the truth of God. And if you would like to plant a seed in this ministry, you haven't been able to do it yet feel free follow the instructions on the bottom of your screen our technician will make that information available to you admin at grtdc.org you can send your prayer request your request for membership and someone from our staff will get back to you looking forward to meeting you again join us next week won't you but until then be careful be prayerful and be holy. Shalom, shalom.